Hello, Paul Pounds. So how do I do this? How do I talk about these books that mean so many different things to so many different people? This is this is where I sit. Uh, my telly's there. This is where I sit to watch films and YouTube. And over there, in my eyeline, is a cabinet that my parents got as a wedding present. Glass-fronted, 60s bookcase. And in there are my pan books of horror. And since I started this YouTube channel, every time I sit here, they've been sat staring at me, kind of going, you're going to have to make a video about us at some point, pal. And how are you going to do it? So we can't talk about the pan book of horror without talking about Herbert Van Thal, who edited volumes 1 to 25. He is the pan book of horror. And when he died in 1983, and uh, Clarence Padgett took over to do the last few volumes, a lot of people are quite critical of those last few, saying that they're not as good. And sales did go down. That's why they're so hard to find. My collection goes up to 28. I haven't... I've never found an affordable 29 and 30. I'll keep looking. Maybe I'll drop on them at some point. But Herbert Van Thal put such an indelible stamp on the first 25 volumes that whoever took over from him wouldn't be able to recapture that magic that Herbert Van Thal uh, imbued those books with. No slight to Clarence Padgett because they are good anthologies the one that the the, last, the ones that I've got that that he uh edited that I've read I have enjoyed but they're different so Herbert Van Thaal started Home and Van Thaal uh publisher just after the second world war I've only got one Home and Van Thaal book which is a a uh, novella by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu. It's a lovely book. And then Home and Van Thal Publishers kind of folded and Herbert Van Thal went on to work as uh, an, an editor in the broadest sense of the word. He uh, was in charge of reprinting uh classic British and American Victorian novels uh, under an imprint called the Doty Library um, and he edited other anthologies as well, other anthologies of horror and spooky stories and detective stories and all sorts but I think it's the pan book of horror that he's best remembered for there's a a wonderful chap called Johnny Maines who wrote an amazing book called Back From The Dead that is about Herbert Van Thaal and the Pan Book of Horror. And I urge you to check it out because he goes into much more detail than I can in a 10 to 15 minute YouTube video. And it's got one of my all-time favourite Les Edwards covers. And viewers of my channel know how much I love Les Edwards' work. And the cover is just amazing. So as far as I can see, the Pan Book of Horror is built of three main components. The content, obviously. The cover. And nostalgia. I hope... I hope I speak for some of you guys watching this video when I talk about the nostalgia nostalgia is very personal but we seem to have a shared experience of 
the pan book of horror and that can't be ignored when you're talking about it and it goes back to a time of three television channels that went off at like half eleven and told you to go to bed with a horrible like monotone beep after the national anthem and horror was quite scarce like actual horror stuff so if you're anything like me you found horror in other places places like public information films places like the opening credits for Hammer House of Horror and Tales of the Unexpected and places like the Pan Book of Horror because you trans again I hope I'm talking for you guys this is a a very personal kind of thing but I hope I'm ticking some boxes for you lot as well it was like a transition from for example the Armada book of ghost stories which were safer and although spooky weren't challenging and then you from there you'd progress to the pan book of horror and it was like a smack in the chops it really was and it was a step on from books you might get from the school book club either pick out of the little catalogues or we had a chap that used to come and sell remainder stock and you were allowed to bring 60p that buy you three books and he was called Mr Dransfield but he had safe school age spooky books and the Pan Book of Horror was the next step and we experienced it alone. You'd maybe not want to watch what your parents were watching on the telly. Or it was time to go to bed. And you'd have to sit and read in winter. Summer was different, but in winter you'd have to sit and read by torchlight. And then you could get away with it. And if you heard someone coming up the stairs, you'd turn your torch off. Because... All kids seem to get torches bought for them around that era um, by your nan or older relatives. Oh, get our Al a nice torch. And then your dad would be well impressed. He'd be like, come and look at this torch that our Al's got. It's lovely. Feel way to that torch. That's a good quality torch, is that? So you'd experience these things alone. And yes, the content was yeah okay so there was there was Bram Stoker and H.G. Wells and Joan Aiken and authors that I don't want to detract from the quality because I love some of H.G. Wells's uh, sinister short stories they're amazing but they're safer and then the pan book of horror comes along and some of the stories are genuinely brutal and horrific. Some of the stories present horror not being horrific like the emotions you would feel as a desiccated hand comes out of a crypt. That's horrific in a different way to somebody literally just being cut apart and dipped in acid for revenge and then the story ends and you're like that wasn't even a story that was just a catalogue of atrocity and some would be humorous which uh, one of my favourites being Hell's Bells which I did as a Sunday story and you're alone reading this book at night normally perturbed and checking at your door just to make sure it's not creaking open and then Herbert Van Thal would drop in something that does genuinely make you chuckle 
And good horror does that. This guy knew horror and could put it together well. In fact, one of the best people to talk about the pan book of horror, I've got my uh, my very battered pan book of horror here. One of the best people to talk about it, I think, is Herbert Van Thal himself. So this is from this is the introduction from the very first pan book of horror. Why do we like reading about torture, sadistic monsters, cruel people? Why do we like frightening ourselves by reading about events which we would hope never to see, let alone participate in? Is it not the memorable and age-long custom that we like being taken out of ourselves? And is there not a slight feeling of smugness that while sitting in our, we hope, comfortable armchairs, we can safely read of the ingenious and terrifying things men do to men. Despite the so-called advance of civilization, we've witnessed wars, revolutions and crimes that are often more terrifying than fiction. In short, truth is stranger than fiction. Even so, we feel that the stories in this book are such that if your nerves are not the strongest, then it's wise to read them in daylight, lest you should suffer nightmares, for these authors know their craft, and they have not hesitated to expound it with little thought of sparing you from the horrifying details. That's like the manifesto of the pan book of horror. Then there's the covers. Now this, again, this is a bit of covers and a bit of nostalgia. This is a time when we weren't exposed to a lot of horror, even though we were desperate to be as young horror fans. So we had like Alan Frank's book of horror films that we maybe weren't allowed to stay up and watch. And we certainly couldn't get into cinemas to see it. So we had photographs, we had snapshots of monsters and zombies and creatures and just looking at those single stills from movies was evocative and exciting. And we also had the covers of the pan books of horror. And the cover was like taunting bait. Every time you picked up that book, you saw it. Every time you closed that book after reading something unpleasant... It was there, you saw the cover. And they were like an ominous snapshot of the promise of something that was maybe going to be too much for you. And some of them were sinister and mysterious. Some of them were just full-on unpleasant images. But each one was special and in some way, in some magical way, perfectly evoked the horror that these volumes contain. Now I'm coming at this as reminiscences of a, a younger reader and these things shaped my taste for horror and whenever I revisit them they never fail to surprise me how just how good the majority of the stories are for different reasons some uh, horror stories that are so well crafted they feel sculpted and as I said before in the video 
some of the stories are just a punch in the chops. Bang, there you go. That was brutal. Next. And you never quite know what you're going to get. But I'm sure if a reader, if someone read them as an adult, you know, as they came out or decades ago, their experiences are going to be different from mine. Which is, is cool. And if you've got different experiences, do do put something in the comments. I do genuinely love reading your comments and finding, you know, finding out about your book experiences and passions. I do this channel because I just love chatting about books. So if you can interact with me, I love that. It's round about this time in a video I would talk about price. Um, but I can't. It's very cheesy, but these books genuinely are priceless. No, I'll not do that. <laughs> They're creeping up in value. A lot of the earlier ones you can get quite reasonably. It's the latter few, uh, especially after volume 25, that are super pricey. Uh, uh, the last time I looked and did a proper hunt for them, I couldn't find anything of the last few under £100. Most of them were like 150 And then you find ones that are like, 350 seriously the last few are really expensive but you do drop on them keep checking charity shops maybe don't expect to find one from a book dealer because they know what they've got but charity shops and flea markets and second hand shops i know of one person uh over the past few months that found a whole bunch of the last few in a charity shop and had them but bought them all and let other fans know that they had them and sent them on for a sensible and reasonable price. So that's the Pan Book of Horror. And if you're watching this video just out of interest and it's all new to you, dig in, get some. It doesn't matter what volume you get, just get the cheapest ones and crack on because every single volume has absolute gems in it and if you're already a fan of the pan book of horror and a collector i hope i've managed to tickle those nostalgia nodes in your brain so thank you for watching guys and i honestly hope i've done this legendary series justice and I hope I've done your memories of them justice. And I'll see you lot in the next video.